That is heavy. I think it weighs like 30 kilos. Hey guys, welcome back. In uh, this episode, I've got some upgrades that I'm going to do. So this is the very beginning of um, a lot of upgrades on this boat. Those upgrades are going to be... I've got a whole heap of lithium cells and BMSs. I'm going to make a massive 48 volt battery bank. Obviously not all the 12 volt system. It's going to be 48 volt main battery bank and I step down to a 12 volt system. I'm also going to swap the diesel out for an electric motor. So that's all stuff that's uh, coming up in the future. Let's run through what I hope to get done in this video. I've got this thing here, this Victron Multi Plus 2 GX 48 volt. I've got a couple of cables, smart controller MPPT 100 slash 20. So max 100 volts, 20 amps. I've got a Serbo GX and the uh, the 50 touch display that goes with that so I can monitor everything. And this is a galvanic isolator, 15 amp. So I don't think I'm ever gonna be bringing in more than 15 amps from Shore Power. So that's everything that I hope to get done in this video. Because my current battery bank is 12 volts, this is obviously not gonna work with that battery bank. So what I'm hoping is now that I've got this galvanic isolator, because of galvanic corrosion, which is basically just stray currents, possibly from other boats or whatever, finding their way back through your boat to shore power. So this essentially disconnects your earth wire. So your earth wire comes in here, is disconnected through, I guess some sort of uh, transformery thing. And then, um, and then off to shore power. So it, it literally disconnects your earth um, physically uh, from, from shore power. This is the reason why I haven't been connected. I have been worried that uh, being connected to shore power for such a long time speed up the corrosion process underneath the waterline. Um, and so I basically have just been living off solar panels. And then every now and then when it's raining for like three days straight, then I will plug in to shore power, I'll juice up the batteries and then I'll take it back out. But yeah, so what I hope to do is install this first and then this with uh, these data cables. And I'm hoping to just be plugged into shore power now and still be able to run everything. Actually, there should be somewhere in that box of goodies is also two Victron DC to DC uh, chargers. So from 48 volts to 12 volts. And in the meantime, between the two of them, I think they're 25 amps each, which was absolutely plenty for now. I should be able to keep my 12 volt system running. And I also through this bad boy, will have 240 volts. And then um, hopefully I've still got power after I connect all this stuff. And then after that, yeah, next video will probably be batteries. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get this thing installed. Right here, this Victron Galvanic Isolator, that needs to be installed just as close to shore power as possible. And definitely before anything that's connected to uh, the earth um, around your boat. So basically, I've got a little spot right next to shore power in on my boat, which is inside the um, cockpit locker. So it's gonna be inside the cockpit locker. I should be able to just make sure everything's disconnected and safe, take out that earth wire, connect it here, reconnect it here, on it goes. And it should be as simple as that. <laughs> Probably right there, I'll mount that uh, little Victron thing. Right there, it's out of the way, it's sort of protected. Chef gel. Radio. setting man the most simplest of jobs 
the most simplest of jobs is always a mission. So that's the galvanic isolator. I'm not going to do anything else tonight, but tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll work on installing that bad boy. Gotta just uh, have some food before my power gets. So I've just been looking for a spot to put the inverter. This is what I call the garage. That blue Victron is the existing uh, battery charger. Um, ideally, I could put it there, but it doesn't fit. Uh, that's a little bit too far off the center line of the boat. I want to keep it as uh, as close to the center line as, as possible. There's the current inverter. Um, I thought about putting it sideways underneath there, but it also doesn't fit. So that leaves me with this spot here. It's not ideal because it's stopping, it's taking out some of the actual entryway into the garage, but um, I don't really have a better place to put it. Disconnect the old inverter, take this whole box off, and then uh, install that. I'm gonna need to also cut a little bit out of here. Oh. Okay, the moment of truth, uh, plugging it in. This is the part I like the least all the time. Um, no matter if it's AC, DC, no matter what. When you're turning it on, oh, it's not a good feeling in it. I don't think it ever goes away, but right, let's go. Okay, I'm hearing some clicking. It looks like it's on. Ooh. Everything looks fine at the moment yeah so what i'm going to do now is servo gx this display unit i'm just going to uh wire it into that battery so i've got control and then plug it in and then i'm going to configure all the uh all the settings to make sure they're right <laughs> There you go. It wasn't installed with the idea that it was going to be coming back out, so there was all other stuff in the way, so I just ripped it out. When in doubt, rip it out. <laughs> Look at all this uh, area I've got to play with now. Whoop, 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 whoop. This wire here is Servo GX. It's just the power lead. There's a lot more still to be done, but just in the meantime, I'm just gonna throw this into the positive and negative bus here, um, just so I've got power. I know it's like seven o'clock now, so I'll hit the hay and uh, smash it out tomorrow morning. I have managed to get this little thing working because it wasn't actually responding to my uh, thing like it wasn't responding to my touch um, I've updated the firmware on that thing which is in the garage and now that's uh, working and now I've managed to go online and I am updating the multi plus two it's taken ages all that's done except for one setting that I can't access without an online app and paralleling windows through my Mac. Um, and that setting, if you want to know, which I, you probably do, um, is uh, just a setting, uh, it's called search mode or something like that, which um, when it, I'll set in a, uh, a specific wattage, say like 20 watts, and when the AC loads around the boat are less than 20 watts, then the inverter will essentially, it sort of shuts off and then it only turns on like once every second, a split second, just to see if there's any more loads. Um, basically that takes it from like 75 watts standby power to like two or 20 or something like that, two. 
heaps less. Anyway, that's a feature that I will install. Um, yeah, so what I'm up to now is I'm just going to put this here for now. You might think that that's a really shitty spot to put it, and it definitely is. But um, this whole galley area, including this whole area that I'm standing in now, is going to get a ma uh, complete makeover as well once I've uh, finished installing the batteries and the um, electric motor. Once all, all that's done, um, this will find a new home and it'll be much better. But for now, it just needs to be installed somewhere where I can see it. So it's going out. <laughs> All right, that's done. So in here, I've got two 48 volt to 12 volt converters, and that's what's essentially going to be running my uh, 12 volt uh, network just around the boat. With the galvanic isolator now installed, I'm more than happy to be connected to shore power and use this full time. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys really quickly um, how I, it's essentially my version of a wiring diagram. Here on my iPad, I just have a, a photo editing software of some description and it took me a while to actually uh, do this as I was sort of figuring out a lot of it as I went along but um, yeah it's, it's essentially quite simple. You can see here's my two, two 48 volt battery banks of 200 amp hours each and then I just got pictures of the actual devices that I was going to use. So this is a uh, Victron Lynx bus bar. There you can see is charge controller for the electric motor. That will be coming up in a future video, not too far away. And then obviously your battery is going to need to be, um, to be able to isolate it if you need to work on, on one or two of them. So they will both have their own little isolation. And then I just did the, the lines for the wires. And every uh, every wire is going to need a fuse. The fuse protects the wires, not the uh, the actual devices. So yeah, so I just went from there, and then I've got a, an app which you can find online, which is called Wire Sizer. Um, I think it costs like four bucks or something like that, but it's yeah, it's pretty good. Obviously, all these wire calculators are all over the internet as well. If you just want to do that, and um, and then. You just punch in, I just find out from the device that's being used, i.e. the engine is on and the uh, the mains are on or whatever, then I find out how much power, maximum power that's possibly going to pull, and then I get a wire, so these are my wire sizes here, so that's 4 aught cable, 4 aught cable, so then I'll just put the wire size in there so I know what size wire I'm dealing with, and then and then I'll go onto that uh, online. I'll find what size fuse I need for for that size wire, and and my fuses are also according to whatever devices I'm running. Once you sort of break it down into little steps and slowly build and build and build, it, it is actually quite easy. So I don't know if you uh, if you're sort of relatively new to this like me, this. There's a good way of doing it. Man, oh man. Hey, check this out. Let me know if you know what these are for. Sneak peek into a future video. Okay, I've pulled out all the wiring for this uh, full upgrade. You can still see all the mud from when basically everything I own went through a flood. Um, this is the one that I'm chasing, so I'll pull some of that out positive and negative and then uh, wire in those DC to DC uh, converters. Oh, I think I'll leave those out for now. <laughs> step over the sails, step onto the used cables. I think the 12 volt bus, I don't think they have crimps nor do any of these have crimps so just I only need, yeah, I guess four. Four for the end where it uh, connects to the uh, Lynx shunt. Ooh, that, that is satisfying. Look how neat it is. There you have it, folks. So that's gonna look like that. Obviously the negative's going down here to the boss bar. So I think that's pretty neat. If you think you've got a better way of doing that, let me know, uh, put, a, put a comment below. Um, I'd really like to hear it, that'd be good. I will uh, neaten up all these cords uh, at a later date.
There we go. How good does that look? Yeah, tell me that doesn't satisfy your OCD. There you have it. So obviously, again, this here, this Lynx Power In, is actually going to be underneath the bed in the quarter berth. Um, yeah, so it's going to be through that bulkhead. Um, yeah, so don't get too hung up on uh, how it looks at the moment because this is just so that I can have power when I uh, rip out the old 12 volt batteries. Okay, that is uh, nothing blew up. I'm still here. I didn't go up in a fiery ball of madness. Um, everything's working. I've got it all plugged in. There's uh, my bolognese that's on its way. Um, excuse the mess if you can see it in the background. Man, it's just such a small space gets so hectic so quickly. So basically the only thing that I had was everything seems to be up and running. Um, when I, at night time, because uh, the inverter's on, I haven't got it in that search mode that I talked about where it turns off when it's only getting a sort of certain amount of power. So I physically turn it off at night because the uh, inverter's right next to my head. Um, and it's got a little bit of a hum to it. It's not really bad. I could sleep with it on, but I just don't need to. So I turn it off and then in the morning, sometimes when I've turned it on, it's stripped the, uh, the, the breaker fuse, both here and on the boat, which are basically the exact same breaker. And I've got this, I had this limited to 14 amps input and it's shore power is 15 amps. Um, and I guess when it's turning on that peak power, cause this can provide from the input up to like 50, I don't know. I, can't, I don't know exactly, but it's a lot. It's like 40 amps or something like that through the shore connection if it's available. So you can actually set it to what it um, will limit. And I think when it's turning on and that peak power, it's spiking above 15 amps and tripping the breaker. So what I'm trying at the moment is, I haven't fully gotten to the bottom of this problem, but what I'm trying at the moment is just limiting it to 13 amps and so far so good. Um, and even even lower. I don't really need at the moment that much more power um, than 13 amps at 240 volts But what I'll do is if I really need that tiny little bit more I'll flick it on and then just up it by one or two amps. If you've gotten this far Thanks so much for watching really appreciate it um, Go ahead. Just leave us a thumbs up if you enjoyed or you got something out of this video yeah, yeah. All right, so tune in next video where I'm going to make a 48 volt, 400 amp hour battery. That is going to be a in kilowatts. I don't know. That's this many kilowatts up there or there. That's this many kilowatt hour battery bank. I've got, this is one cell that I got from China of a reputable uh, manufacturer. And there's 64 of these. And I've got some BMSs and I'm going to wire them all in and make a massive lithium battery bank and upgrade and get ready for the electric motor. So thanks for watching. Awesome. <laughs>